Hey, good to see you. Hope you're well. Welcome back to Dev Savara. So today I want to talk to you about the next project. This is it. This is what's happening. We've got uh, the mobile operating system project that I'm working on and I'm starting off. Uh, I'll go into the details about what we're going to be building on. But first I want to talk to you about something that mo not many people know. Uh, not many engineers can come. Maybe, you know, they, were, they weren't around when this happened. So let's start at the beginning. Um, making an operating system. So it's obvious that if you try to build an operating system that is say, you know, a Mac OS or iOS or, or Android from the ground up by one person, then it's like it's impossible and an impossible undertaking. You'd have to use existing software. You'd have to use existing systems. You couldn't just write all the code by yourself. Sure, that's correct. You couldn't. It would be uh, impractical. But if you go back all the way back to say Microsoft DOS, the first iterations of Microsoft DOS were built on something called DOS, Disk Operating System. Now, the people at Microsoft did not build a operating system from scratch. They bought one and they adjusted it and then they licensed it, uh, licensed it to IBM. So it was a more of an a, a ingenious business move that got them you know, ahead more so than an engineering technical move. Uh, they, the one cool thing that they did is they built uh, a basic um, interpreter, I think it was, on the, in the disk operating system uh, really quickly to get it to IBM so that they could get the deal. But that's another story. What I want to say is that the people who built the original disk operating system, I think there was a couple, I don't think there was many people, it might have been, only been one, that built it. And really, it's not that huge of a deal when it's already been done so many times before in the past. Uh, a disk operating system is something that is there for the user to interact with without having to have to write programs for everything. And so what I mean by that is that there are commands in the command line that you write and then that gets executed uh, and then you it performs an action on the computer without having to have to write the assembly or the code to to, to do that. And that makes interacting with the computer a lot easier. It gives you these kind of interactive commands. What I want to do is build something like that. A very simple operating system that runs on a mobile phone that has two things that are the most important. One is a secure communication system to send messages that cannot be broken. Something like the ratchet uh, system that generates keys uh, that's used by signal for messaging. And second, a low level, very simple CLI, command line interface for the phone to communicate with people. So you would, the whole operating system is built on contacts, right? So this is the principle, that, these are the two principles that we're building this project on. It is ultimate security at the fundamental level of the operating system for communication. That's what it's for. The second one is a very simple interface that is not bogged down by any external, uh, applications. It is just for communicating securely. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an operating system that can create files, store files on an SSD, uh, and then send messages, right? So those are the two commands that we want to really kind of focus on. And the files uh, we want to store would be like a context list file, something like that. We don't even need a multitasking uh, component to this. We can run it as a single task, a serial t task, and we could add multitasking later on, right? The idea is just to keep it so simple that even if someone tries to inject firmware from somewhere onto the hardware device, there'll be a checksum that will, when the OS kind of runs a command, that checks the integrity of the whole system, right? So it'll take the whole RAM block, do a checksum, and if there's something that's wrong, it'll just shut down and wipe the files, wipe the messages, everything. Ultimate security. That's what we want to aim for. So we wanted to, we, that's the project. Now, I want to also open source this. Uh, and the reason I want to open source it is because there are strict export controls for such encryption, for encrypted devices, for apps. Now, the thing is, is that the fundamental flaw of <laughs> of Microsoft, uh, sorry, of any operating system is not necessarily the application that's running. You could have, say, a Signal app that's running, but if you have a compromised operating system, 
It doesn't matter what app you're running on. So say for instance, you say have a application that's secure in communicating with another device, another phone, iPhone. So that's called, tele let's say Telegram. So you have Telegram that talks to another Telegram account and they have a, and they have a, a secure line of communication. If the operating system is compromised, it doesn't matter how secure that communication is, is because someone can be just snooping on what you're looking at in the operating system. And then uh, that's it. It doesn't matter. Like along, along the line that the weakest point is the operating system. So what we want to do is build, start a fundamental change in how we use these tools to communicate with the operating system being secure. The other weak link is obviously the hardware. So if you inject something into the hardware, you could overwrite the, the actual operating system itself to to kind of pretend to be a secure operating system while in fact it's not, it's, it might do something to, to, to be insecure. And I guess that's, that's kind of one of the things we need to talk about when, when going further, uh, when it comes to application security. So uh, I'm excited to jump on this project. It's an embedded software project. So what we're going to, to do is another thing I've, I've got on board is I, I've talked to the guys at JetBrains uh, and they have said that they're happy for me to use uh, an application, their applications. So I'm offering uh, to promote their stuff as well as part of this. So basically at this point, if you wanted to get a discount, a 25% discount on any JetBrains product, you can use this discount code um, up here and you can get yourself any license that you want at that discount, 25%. So I'm happy to be working with JetBrains. I will be using C Lion or the low level and embedded stuff, the embedded development stuff for this operating system. Um, it's gonna be fun. I mean, I'm gonna spend a bit of time, I'll be streaming uh, this, this project as I go along. Um, and because I'm doing this, I'm kind of like, it's great for me to learn. And I don't know if I'll get it right the first time, I might not, but that's the whole point, right? We're here to have some fun, we're here to create something which is possibly secure, and we're going to open source it so people can build on it. Now, the reason, <laughs> One of the, there's a couple of concerns, right? So if you open source something and you want to, you know, distribute it and make sure that it's still secure when it's distributed, how do you do that? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know how you can guarantee the security of an operating system if it is open source and um, if everybody, you know, has the ability to clone it and then build their own version. I guess the idea is for the principle of it, right? So you can basically have other people take it and build their own the idea is that you can take the operating system and run it on your own device and build your own secure communications device with other people that maybe can share the same protocol for communication. Who knows? That's that's the kind of thinking about it. It's like, if you want something, the principle that I found out in about, uh, about in security and uh, code breaking is if, if it's open, right, to inspection, right, you can look at the code, but you can't break the message. That is the most secure system, right? So we're gonna try something like that. Same as Signal, Signal's open source, right? Well guys, that's it. That's it for the quick introduction. I'm excited to get into this. I will be starting this week on just getting the ball rolling with possibly doing a stream. Uh, actually, I will do a stream this week and I will get that in from, uh, you know, the ball rolling. Again, if you wanna get onto a JetBrains, uh, if you've got PyCharm or if you need to use any of their uh, IDEs uh, and you want a discount, you can use this code. All right, I'll speak to you later and I'll see you uh, yeah, soon. Bye.